Dear Excellencies, dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you today. The last two days, we enjoyed plenty of sp inspiring speeches and motivating discussions. In the following session, we invite you to meet German good practices and offer you a glimpse of how ESD is implemented on the ground. When we started planning this World Conference, we were excited to welcome you all in Berlin. To have a dynamic part in the program, we planned field trips to local ESD practitioners. We wanted to give you a chance to get to know and experience the local ESD community yourself. That is why we called, why we called upon our local ESD stakeholders to open their doors and share their work and experiences with you. Unfortunately, the pandemic does not allow us to physically travel yet. But coming together digitally allows us to offer you an even wider variety of actors across Germany in this session. I am pleased to invite you to go on a virtual journey and meet one of the 15 hosts from different fields. You will find ESD in action in formal as well as in informal educational settings, at schools and universities, as well as museums and early childhood educators. Some of the hosts are part of the UNESCO family. You will find inspiring examples of UNESCO networks presenting how they implement ESD in their day-to-day -day work. You will find insights on how ESD can be a motor for gender equality and empower young people to change the world and much more. What connects all of these projects and stakeholders is a great passion and energy for putting ESD into practice. We hope that you can use this opportunity to change on the topics that are most relevant to you directly with the stakeholders right now. We are convinced that you can use this opportunity to learn from each other and be inspired. Together we can strengthen our messages around ESD. I want to use this opportunity to thank the UNESCO and the Federal Ministry of Education and Research for a trusting partnership. We are grateful to support this World Conference as an important milestone for ESD for 2030. At the German Commission for UNESCO, we remain committed to promote ESD and spread ESD through our strong network, part of which you will get to know right now. We will continue to strengthen the existing partnerships and explore new synergies. We strongly believe that ESD is the key for a more sustainable and just world. Our mandate is clear. We need to further reinforce our collected efforts to put ESD for 2030 in practice. I wish you all a very fruitful discussion and hope you will be able to come to Germany very soon to share your experience with us in person. Thank you very much. Well, hello everyone, I welcome you to our workshop session. My name is Beja and I will be moderating us throughout this workshop. Okay, next slide. As I said before, I welcome you all to this workshop. I'm glad to welcome you uh, to this session where we'll be talking about Garden of Sustainable and Fair Trade Possibilities. This workshop is presented to you by the Fair Trade Initiative Zalan and our partner right away from Berlin, the Princessin and Garden Collective Berlin. Next. So the workshop is organized in three main blocks. First, we'll visit a sustainable garden. 
then present our different projects in form of small pitches. And last but not least, we will award some fair school classes. Next. So we invite you all to sit comfortably, to fasten your seat belts, for we are taking you on a trip throughout our different projects. I hope you will enjoy this workshop for we definitely had much fun preparing it for you. At this point, I would like to thank the mighty team that stands behind the organization of this workshop, as you can see. Next. Now, I would like to hand over to our first orator, Ms. Hannah Burkhardt, the project coordinator of the Princess Simon Garden in Berlin. We had originally planned to embark you on an excursion throughout this amazing community garden. But given the current restrictions, we must unfortunately give you some virtual insights into all of our projects. However, we hope for a next occasion to meet all together in Berlin. So Ms. Burkhardt, please, you have the floor. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Uh, we are very happy to be here, even though it's only virtually. And of course, we would have preferred to welcome you all in Berlin and our uh, community garden, um, yeah, which is called Prinzessinnengarten. My name is Hannah. And um, as um, it was already introduced, I'm a project coordinator and um, do a lot of different things also in the garden. Uh, in the following, I will um, show you some slides with some pictures and impressions from the garden and tell you a little bit um, about our work and what we do. So next slide, please. Yes, here you can already see some nice pictures. <laughs> next <laughs> slide, please. So um, Prinzessin Garden uh, uh, has been established in 2009 already. So it has been um, almost 12 years now. Um, and it's a, um, an urban community garden. So um, we are um, creating green spaces um, in, uh, in, in the urban realm. And we do have one uh, or two um, bigger locations where we also have a community garden. And um, our main focus is um, not so much uh, the production of food, but more the low threshold education um, and participation so that as many people as possible can participate and learn um, doing practical activities about the production of um, the sustainable production of food. So it's all about community learning and learning from, from each other and with each other. Um, in the slide, you can see some impressions of um, our work that we do. Um, next slide, please. So, um, of course, the core of um, our, our garden is the community garden. Uh, and um, at our uh, location, uh, we have um, around 100 uh, mobile raised beds, so planter beds and boxes, which are mobile, and um, also present uh, a nice um, solution for creating green spaces. Um, in, in urban areas in cities. Um, in these raised beds, we grow up to 500 different varieties of crop plants um, um, every year. So many different kinds of tomatoes and cucumbers and kale and a lot of different things that you um, can think of. So we have weekly gardening um, sessions that are open for the community. So people normally now in Corona times, people do have to sign up, but normally people just swing by to the um, time slots and they just go in together with us. So nobody has to uh, join a club or um, become a member or pay anything. So it's very low threshold and people who are interested, they just um, join in. Uh, so these are our educational fields um, and um, doing practical activity is a really great um, way to, to sensitize also for different topics like biodiversity, regionality, seasonality. So when do which foods um, and vegetables grow and when don't they do um, or don't they grow? Um, yes, and so we got in together throughout the year. Uh, here in the picture, you can see one impression. The lower picture is from um, setting up these raised beds together. We do um, all our activities um, in a participatory
participatory way so people can always join in. And, and the upper picture shows um, the garden um, a bit later when it's also growing in green. Next slide, please. So in addition to the community garden, uh, we also have a big vegetable field um, where we cultivate vegetables in the ground. And this has been very new for us for two years now and also very exciting. So our, um, our vegetable field is in the middle of the city on a, um, on a vacant um, green space where we have the permission to garden and also to um, uh, investigate the soil for nutrients and pH level and contaminants. Um, so we were allowed to, to garden there. And um, this is a real small scale organic food production um, where we cultivate um, a lot of different um, vegetables that are shared in the community with the people who garden with us, but also partly go into our restaurant on spot where we cook um, meals every day normally. The situation at the moment is a little different. You can see some impressions um, of this vegetable field. Um, next slide, please. So another focus topic is biodiversity. Um, as I said, people can um, uh, investigate and uh, explore different um, varieties of, um, of different food plants. Um, so we, as we don't have the focus on the big production of food, um, people can, can yeah, get to know different kinds of um, and sorts of, of veg vegetables. And also very important aspect of that is also um, uh, harvesting and reproducing seeds from our own plants. Next slide, please. Um, so we not only have the community gardening sessions, but also do a lot of other educational work and workshops and guided tours. A lot of um, school groups come visit us, but also students and um, adults, and we do different uh, workshops and seminars. Um, some political panel discussions um, are also happening um, in our location. Um, and they go from gardening together and cooking, um, seeding, um, yeah, different things. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, many different hands-on workshops on plant cultivation, harvesting, um, cooking, food conservation, seed production, about soil. Soil is also a very important topic for us when it comes to regenerative agriculture that we practice. Next slide, please. Uh, as I said, we do have a garden kitchen, a little restaurant and a cafe where we um, have daily lunch dishes, partly with ingredients from the vegetable field that we grow, um, where we grow vegetables um, on spot. So it's um, kind of a farm to fork um, uh, gastronomy that we offer there. Um, and other supplies are from local farmers from around the area. Next slide, please. Uh, in addition to that, we also have offsite gardening at schools. For example, we set up, up school gardens, but also at um, companies or at mm -hmm. social and cultural institutions where we um, establish tiny offshoot gardens um, and different green spots in the city, which are also mobile, where um, the local community can also join in um, and um, yeah, take part in, in the gardening. Next slide, please. And that's it. It was a, um, a little rush through the slide. Um, but so now we have a little more time for questions, if there yeah. are any questions and if we missed out. It others. was amazing. Thank you so much. It's, I think I will react with and express my joy. Um, I forgot to mention it before, but anytime you have the possibility to write your questions in the chat, just make sure the question will be sent to all the participants so that everybody can see the questions. But since Hannah has given us a little bit more time, does anyone has one question that is really burning in his heart and wants to ask? Okay, I will have one question for you, Hannah. How do you support this project financially? Where yeah, do you get the money from to do such quick things without participants having to contribute anything? Yeah, so we are a self-organized um, self and fully self-financed um, organization. So 
formally, um, our organization form is a nonprofit company. Uh, that means on the one hand, um, we, uh, we are politically and financially independent. So we don't um, receive any major funds from the municipality, but all the, um, all the means that we need to um, pay loans uh, to our employees, to um, pay rents and water and uh, seeds, um, yes. we generate ourselves. Uh, so part of the income comes from our cafe, but also from um, our horticulture services, which means building guidance for other organizations or companies, but also schools sometimes have a, um, have a budget that also pays our work. Um, and also when, uh, when groups come to the garden um, and get a, a personal guided tour or workshops, um, sometimes we, um, are also, uh, we also function as a, an event location so people can rent out um, or have, have their, their, their events in the garden. So mm -hmm. there are many different sources. Okay. Yes. But of course, we also um, write a lot of funding applications for many different projects. So it's really a, a finally scattered um, uh, funding that we have. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That's great. It's very inspiring. I would definitely think about visiting you in Berlin. So just wait for me. Yes. Of Next course. slide, please. Thank you. I think Hannah is still there with us. If you have any question that comes to your mind, write it in the chat. Sherpa will help us collect the questions. And even after the session, the, all the reference will be there to answer to your questions. Okay, now we move on to the second block. And I would like to give a small introduction about the Fair Trade Initiative of Saarland. What you must know is that Saarbrücken is located at the core of Europe in southwest of Germany, having France, Luxembourg, and Belgium just at the corner. The advantage of this is that we have been pushing a cross border fair trade project since 2005. Moreover, we have hosted in 2017, together with all our cross border partners, the International Fair Trade Towns Conference. But what do we mean when we say we are cross committed? By this, we mean a great cooperation between, on one hand, the city council with highly dedicated municipal leaders. And on the other hand, we have, of course, our grassroots movement with the Fair Trade Initiative of Zalan. Next slide, please. Being a platform, as you can see, for 25 partner organizations. And what makes this grassroots movement that we call the ambassadors of Fair Trade so unique? We are a cross-cultural team which stands and promote fair trade with fellow citizens from all over the world. This explains our cross-continental projects and strategies, especially the study trips we organize to the homeland of our ambassadors. Such projects help us, first of all, to get closer to the realities of the producers, to understand the fair trade system, and to create new partnerships between Zalan and Africa or South America. Winnie, tell us please how international we actually are. The team, hello. The team of the Fair Trade Initiative consists of 50% persons from different nations. All three producer continents, that is Latin America, Africa, and Asia are represented in our team. For example, Juan from Costa Rica, Lillian from Uganda, Shilpa from India, among others. As Beja mentioned, we organize educational trips in the producer countries of the global south. And the last trip was took place 2018 in Burkina Faso, as well as in Kenya and contemporaneous one of our member team visited a fair trade certified cooperative in Uganda. The next educational trip was supposed to take place October 2020 in Ecuador, Colombia, and Peru, 
and then came COVID-19. Thank you for listening. Back to you, Beja. Okay, thank you, Winnie. And today we are happy to present you in form of small pitches, the different activities we engage in to promote fair trade across Zalan. I will hand over to Ingrid, who will talk about early childhood education. Ingrid, please. Welcome to our presentation. I would like to introduce you our work, Fair Trade in Early Childhood Education. Fair Kita is a kindergarten in which fair trade and global learning are part of children's everyday life. The diversity of our world can be experienced with all the sentence in global learning. It is based on the vision of a sustainable de development. The children in the daycare center are learning to understand our world is one world. The concept and award, award for fair trade engaged kindergarten take into account fields of ISD. Next. Thank you, Ingrid. Next, we are handing over to Peter and Winnie who will talk about school commitments. In Saarland, we have two campaigns. We tackle education on sustainable uh, development and fair trade. Peter is the coordinator for the campaign Fair Trade School Class. Uh, this campaign is a bridge to the to the international campaign Fair Trade Schools. When he, she is responsible for the Fair Trade Schools in Saarland. We have different educational modules on Fair Trade from, um, from primary school to college. Winnie, please go on. Besides, we offer teacher training on Fair Trade. Some schools in Saarland cooperate and exchange knowledge about educational and sustainable development with the schools in the global south. Thank you so much. Over to Lilia from Centrum House Africa. Thank you very much for this wonderful meeting. House Africa is happy to be with us here today. And um, I'll talk shortly about our work. House Africa is 22 years old, living here in the middle of Saarland, working for change with these wonderful people and for the other wonderful people who are working in Africa and everywhere in the world in our gardens. Our South African Association of Intercultural Active Organizations, we don't only have Africans, we have the whole world here, Asia, we have Syria, we have Sri Lanka, we have so many families here. It's a one world family with children from very different countries, but we work together, we learn about fair trade. We have holiday programs for young people because it's very challenging during the holidays to keep children at home. So our breakfast is a fair trade breakfast. We thank Winnie and Ingrid and the other people who always participate to come and teach our children about fair trade products. We have cooking workshops with fair trade. Cooking is sustainable and eating is sustainable. So if we talk about fair trade every time we eat and every time we cook, then we could really change the world. We have a one world painting competition where children paint topics every year before COVID came. We're trying to do it again this year, next year, and see how it's going to work. And during this competition, it's never about winning because at the end, we all win. Every child gets their idea of fairness, their idea of their world, and they paint what they really want the world to be. Amazing pictures come out and we see what they think and how they plan to share their lives. And lastly, we create awareness about racism, discrimination, and health in communities because without uh, fairness, we cannot work together. Discrimination and racism block our work. And we try to keep a healthy community because our health system is a little bit made for German people. And the other people who come up here find it complicated. And fair trade is one of those concepts in the whole world which works for health. Farmers who produce roses on farms are able to go to hospital and get treatment. And so along this path, we try to be a part of this big change and we thank the partners here in Saarbrücken. And we hope Wonderful. that we Thank you very much. Thank you, Lillian. Next slide, please. So we hand over to Peter, back to Peter for the Media Competence Project. Yes. Um, next slide, please. So um, we, we talk about intercultural media competence projects for the young people, the target group. 
examples of fair trade sustainability SDGs. On the left side, you see, see some pictures of media projects, in, for example, interviews, animated films and short film projects on fair trade and sustainability. As you see, um, this project was some years ago awarded by the UNES German UNESCO Commission too. On the right side, you see um, the, the, the project film projects. So we, we, um, we have a partnership with a film festival in another region, and we plan um, a fair trade use film festival soon. So next slide. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Peter Friedrich from the workshop in Saarbrücken. My name is Friedrich Eisenhut from the uh, Weltladen Saarbrücken. We are um, uh, next, uh, please show the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, our workshop is located in the heart of uh, downtown Saarbrücken. Uh, and we are together in a house with uh, people from the Fair Trade in Initiative, the Network uh, Environment and uh, Network Development Post, uh, Policy, Greenpeace, and uh, a friend of the Earth, and a lot of other organ organizations in the so called House for the Environment. Um, we are selling uh, for more than 30 uh, years uh, certified. Uh, fair trade products. This is uh, very important for us that we uh, only choose, that we only sell um, um, fair trade products from suppliers who uh, show uh, transparency uh, with uh, about, uh, about where the products come from and the conditions of the trade. Um, our team consists of 20 volunteers and is and we are part of a uh, of 800 workshops in germany with about 50 50 000 people working in a typical example of activities uh, uh, that we uh, that we are performing um, uh, a workshop should or uh, should be a place for education and so uh, we uh, take part regularly in the guided city walk for critical consumption. Uh, people who are attending uh, 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 go from shop to shop, uh, from uh, shops who are dealing with ecology, bio foods, uh, uh, who, uh, with shops who uh, are dealing with uh, local products and our fair trade shop which is always part of the uh, tour. And uh, um, as another uh, topic, we, uh, we do uh, visits for school classes. For example, those uh, classes who will be awarded fair trade, fair classes. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I can testify it's definitely what it to make it tour to the Vedlat in East Africa. So, Peter, back to Peter about the okay. faith communities and churches. Thank you, Vija. So, we speak about churches, church institutions, faith communities. So, churches can can join the fight for for fairer terms of tra of trade. They can share the ideas of fair trade with the wider congregation. And churches can integrate educational units on fair trade in communion and confirmation groups, for example. And churches can use fair trade products, certainly, wherever possible. It's not only, only uh, the tea and the coffee. There are some special church products you can look around, which could be used in churches. In the photos, you see a SDG exposition on the right. There was uh, several SDG stations in the church in Saarbrücken last year. On the bottom, you see a presentation of the Kirchentag. It's a German special event gathering more than 100,000 participants from everywhere, from Germany and indeed from all over the world. And there we were with a stand last year too. And this year, it was not possible 
due to COVID. And on the right, you see the World Day of Prayer. That's a possibility to talk about fair trade and churches, because every year there's another country on which this day focuses. Thank you very much. Thank and you, Peter. I get back. As you can see, we try to cover all aspects of the community. So Diana will tell, talk about the university. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, the Fairtrade Universities is an international campaign. You can switch to the next slide, please. Um, it's an international campaign that is um, organized on the national level in a lot of countries, but it is made for the local level, so for the campus level. And in Saarbrücken, we have already two fair trade universities, and they consist of a network of several partner organizations on the campus, such as the yeah, employees from the student service or the students committee, religious organizations, and of course, students themselves. <laughs> And over the past 15 years, um, we could gather in Saarbrücken more than 200 international students uh, that we call fair trade ambassadors. And an interesting fact is that they often get in touch with fair trade for the first time on the campus through this campaign and take this idea back to the Latin American or African home countries. The most important aim is obviously awareness raising for fair trade and related sustainability issues. And we do that by creative actions like the weekly fair trade stand or the postcards that you can see here and engaging a lot of events on the campus. Um, we also focus on bringing or making fair trade products available on the campus. And the best, best example is the campus canteen that offers fair trade products every day. Next slide, please. Perfect. I am also a representative oh, of sorry. the city of <laughs> And the Britain was uh, yes, so first yeah. fair trade town in Germany since 2009, and uh, through its very broad engagement, uh, we got the German fair trade capital in 2015. And the steering group is also made up of a broad uh, network, um, so employees of the town hall, NGOs, educational entities, and the workshop, and some more. And as a municipality administra administration, we support um, that municipal kindergartens and schools, primary schools, participate also in the fair trade programs mentioned before. The second important point is to engage, engage in very enriching networks on the European and national, international uh, level, such as the fair trade towns movement or the European network EU cities for fair and ethical trade. And we are recently cooperating very closely with a, a fair trade town from Honduras, which is called Marcala. And third, again, awareness raising is the most important point of our work uh, because cities have a very broad coverage. And two years ago, we invented or launched a very innovative um, competition that is called Fair Nünftiges Unternehmen, which is made for fair engaged and very yeah, and says ethical businesses in the Brücken that we will launch this summer again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana. Back to Peter. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. We have Corona since one year. And at the end of the pitches, we want to show some examples in Saarland, which could be copied somewhere else in the world. So please, next slides. So how to integrate ESD practically. For example, on the top on the left, you see the example of the fair trade painting competition for children. So pictures were, were painted by the children in, in schools, in, in, in kindergartens, but even in, in space time at, at home too. And they were published in a special calendar. All participants received a calendar. And uh, there's an online exposition too, and it's planned that a live exposition after the lockdown. There's another really good example how to integrate different groups. It was with fair greetings. So children from school classes and after school programs took part and uh, made fair and painted fair greetings and wrote fair greetings for residents of a retirement home in lockdown. And this was added with the fair 
were sweet and they got a message from the world and they were really happy about it. Uh, and uh, this example was copied several times in Saarland and maybe it could be copied in other parts of the world too. Yeah. So we go now, um, a practical example, distribution, fair trade bananas. You see a living banana distributing the bananas uh, to the children of a kindergarten. Or you see a bicycle tour from the world shops, from one world shop to the other world shops. Uh, and it was, there were several institutions included, for example, the Bicycle Club ADFC. And uh, the participants got information about three world shops in, in the region, which they visited during the tour. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Next. As you can see, we have a big team of different people that engage to our Zealand for fair trade. And before COVID, we were, every second day, we were on our way throughout the whole region for fair trade. And I want to end up with a very nice contribution from the actor, Rufi, who said that the aspect of churches and Fairway Kita is a very good approach because mostly churches are responsible for the kindergarten. And also the idea of the greeting cards was very much appreciated. So if there are no questions, we are going to hand over the, the word to Peter for the last block because we are also running out of time. So Peter, please, can you introduce this last block? Yes. Okay, the award for fair trade school classes. The title fair trade class aims to raise awareness about a more equitable world in schools. Candidates for the title can be any primary, secondary, technical or vocational school class. All these class projects of school class who, partic um, who participate can compete. It's um, in autumn 2020, the 450th class was awarded. Now there are more than 10,000 awarded students from several countries in Europe. So first we start now in Saarbrücken. This is the fair trade, first fair trade town of Germany. Next slide, please. We welcome Ms. Gesine Zare, class teacher and contact person for the Fairtrade School at the Willi Graf Real Schule in Saarbrücken. Good evening. My name is Gesine Zare and I'm a teacher of the, at the Willi Graf School in Saarbrücken, where I'm responsible for Fairtrade as well. Since 2014, we became the first Fairtrade Real School of our town and had the most classes participating for the contest Ferge Klasse. Um, now, uh, at school, we teach our kids about fair trade. There are certain times we dedicate it only to talk about these subjects. Also, we cooperate with the Fair Trade Initiative Saarland. I, I just have a question, um, if it's possible. Now, you will learn about, about your school. And we have a school class, the 10 r 3 how did the pupils of the school class 10 or 3 learn about fair and ethical trade? Um, I have said uh, there are certain times we dedicate it only to talk about these subjects. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular in the school class, how, um, which subjects do you, do you talk about in, with that school class, about chocolate, about fair trade in general? How did you do it with that school class? Um, usually, uh, usually, usually we did mm. a lot of activities and plan the activities. Mm. Um, here are some examples for earlier activities and campaigns we did. We sold fair trade articles. Mm. We organized a fashion mm. show where mm. people's models showing mm. the beauty of they are closed by some stores of Saarbrücken. Ah, okay, very interesting. So those are the, the activities um, which were made. That is one criteria after the first criteria to talk about fair trade in the school class. 
I'm really happy that the school class has, has made such projects like uh, the Bolivia Week, participated in Bolivia Week, or made um, this Christmas cards. Uh, what did happen with that Christmas card? Who, 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 were the, who received those cards? Mm -hmm. So um, this year, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we couldn't do all that. So instead, we crafted Christmas cards for the organizations um, carrying for homeless and elderly people. And so uh, it was a, a good idea. Um, we offered fair trade shops in the school where we sold chocolate, tea, etc. So oh. there's many ideas. Thank you very much. This gives you a short impression about the engagement of the students. Now I give the microphone to Heike Zimmermann. Heike Zimmermann is a member of the jury for the fair trade school classes. And she will do the next step because you will receive a special certificate. Please, Heike. Thank you, Peter. Next. As a member of the jury, I hand over the Fair School Class Award virtually today. Congratulations on your class engagements and your commitment for a long time. Billy Graf School is also a fair trade school, and as Gesine Sara said, has the most numbers of fair, class, uh, of fair school class awards. Thank, Thank you, you very that. much. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. The thanks to to um, <clears throat> to Gesine for 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 giving us some impressions. Now we will go to Berlin, the capital of Germany, and we welcome Sonja von Eichborn, the director of Unfair Tobago. Anfa Tobago carried out educational units in the class, the class 60 of the Albert Gutzmann School in Berlin Wedding. Could you tell about the audience about this particular cooperation of uh, your association with the school and the school class? Yes, certainly. Can I have the next slide, please? Great. Thank you. Um, so I'm taking part here on behalf of this class um, uh, and their teacher greets you. His name is Bert Klingenberg. He was um, the class teacher of this class in the last school year. Um, these extraordinary students are in a class um, for special language needs and many of those students face social and economic disadvantages. So talking about fair trade is not their very first problem. Um, but they are very often um, uh, affected by tobacco smoke. So this is why we could work with this class about tobacco, about children's rights and sustainable development. And in these classes, they learned um, about, uh, on the one hand, about the harmful product of tobacco, but also about child labor on tobacco fields. Um, like tobacco is harmful for the health and the education of these children because there is nicotine in the tobacco plant. Um, and after learning all of this, um, they concluded for tobacco, fair trade means no trade at all, which is a very, very strong conclusion in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I can tell about the most important action because they have uh, decided to send a video with their messages to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child, which is currently reviewing the German report on the rights of the child. And they have done this, um, it was already like last year in May, uh, and they accompanied it with a poster rally, an online poster rally during Corona times, certainly. Uh, and uh, they have asked the committee on the one hand to do something about, against, um, to reduce tobacco use in Germany and to um, protect children. But they have also asked them to do something uh, for the children on tobacco fields. That means hold uh, tobacco companies responsible for child rights violations, which is a very strong thing for 
students to do in their situation. So I'm very proud of them and I'm very sorry I couldn't present them or couldn't in get them to uh, join us here. Okay, thank you very much. The children showed um, really good the criteria three of the awards too. The pupils proudly report about the engagement for fair trade and uh, they did it with media and they did it that they, they addressed their message to to other groups and here to the UN group is it's really good example of being successful in criteria three and the all three all criteria too. So I'm really happy to give the world to Heike again that she can give you the award. Thanks, a very good uh, presentation about unfair tobacco. Congratulations on the first fair school class of the capital of Germany. Greetings to Berlin. Thank you very much on behalf so, of the students. So I will congratulations. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So you see the slide of the of the yeah. of the certificate. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You a lot. Congratulations to the first fair trade school class in Berlin. Unfortunately, we don't listen to the audience um, as it would be a live atmosphere. It would be different. It would be more sound. And we don't want to do it like in the TV show where they, they make the sound virtually. <laughs> so we go now to the last class and we go to our um, neighbor country, to France, to the city of Metz and to the Collège Tassin. At a, as, a, as a part of a multidisciplinary project, the pupils of the five year classes worked on the theme of sustainable spread. And they were supported by the fair trade organization Artisan du World, Artisan du Monde, the world shop in Metz. And we are happy to uh, welcome two pupils and um, I, um, two, two, two pupils, you see the names and I welcome Sophie and Evan to say some words to about your project last school year. Hello, my name is Sophia. And I'm Evan. We are both 15 and we live in Metz in France. Uh, and we are both students in Collège des Uns in Metz. So, as part of a cross curricular project, the second year pupils courses worked on the subject of sustainable chocolate spread. They were supported by the fair trade organization Artisan du Monde. They organized entertainment about fair trade and tasted fair trade products. They created fair trade friendly words, posters, and videos explaining fair trade in both German and French. They searched and cooked recipes of homemade sustainable spreads and elaborated the advertising poster of their product. Next slide, please. The final work was to taste and vote for the best chocolate spread with the help of the other students and the German pen friends. The project was then presented to parents and future students of the school who were also able to taste our homemade spread. At last, an article in an educational support journal with the opinions of the students about the project was written and published. For this whole project, the students proudly obtained the label Fira Classe from our partner Fira Fair Trade Initiative, Zalam. At the beginning, only a few students knew what was behind eating sustainable. We were especially happy about the chocolate spread. But then the project changed our way of consuming. Today we are aware and committed. We would like to thank in particular Artisan du Monde, Fair Trade International Saarland, and our involved teachers like Madame Martin. Thank you for listening. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this really, really good um, presentation. You showed with your presentation how pupils can change the world. It's a really good example. And it shows on the fourth criteria very, very well as well. The fourth criteria of the Fair Trade uh, Class Award is we are fair trade ambassadors and spread fair trade ideas at school, at home, and in our free time. And you did it really, really good. So I, I have to say now, I give the word to Heike again, to um, that she can give you the award. Next. Okay, next, the award, please. Next, please. Yes, Fair School Class, we will congratulate you. Thank you for letting people taste fair trade products in your friend's school in Metz. And as Peter said, it's a great pleasure to train young people as ambassadors on fair trade in their environment. Thank you so much. <laughs> so we really um, uh, felicitation, um, congratulations, uh, uh, Glückwunsch in German. So um, now we will end this part of the fair trade school class. But before I will end, I just say one word: the fair. You find the um, the information about the the award on the websites fair. Fair class org, class equitable punct, punct, point org, and fair, you know, zeichen, klasse, punct, de. And Sie haben, and you have the possibility to participate every year and from any country in the world. So now I give the word to Beja to the conclusion. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, and that's it. We are at the end of our workshop. We got some minutes left for the conclusion. And I will read all the reference to stay in the chat at least till 6.30, right, Peter? In case you have any question or you need discussions, please uh, just stay. Up. Winnie, next slide with the... Can you please? Yeah. And also I want to, to talk about the our stand. You have the possibility to exchange your contacts and interact on our stand. Uh, please, Peter, can you tell us more about the virtual stand? I don't know how so to get there. It's a part of the conference and it's um it was the, we were one of the exam good German examples presented by the Deutsche UNESCO Commission, the German Co UNESCO Commission. At the end, I just want to say thanks for all who made it possible from our team, but the supporters too. For example, in, in, in Saarland, we can say thank you for the Ministry of Education and Culture, supports us since uh, several years by financial fundings and other institutions in Saarland and German world who make it possible that we make our work. In particular, I want to say thank you for all the volunteers and the engaged persons from school classes, from the civil society, from the Fertzut Initiative Saarland, from the members of the Fertzut Initiative Saarland, which make it possible that we are now at that conference and that the, that the that the aspect of fair trade is issued in this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the floor is open. Does anyone have a question to the to our speakers from the pitches from the fair school classes? If that's not the case, we are at the end of our workshop.